Blessed, Blessed are they, are they that, that hunger and thirst, and thirst after, after righteousness, righteousness, for they, for they shall, shall be filled. Food for Soul and Goa co-working present today's readings and reflection. July 11, 2022. Memorial of St. Benedict, Abbot. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear the word of the Lord, princes of Sodom. Listen to the instruction of our God, people of Gomorrah. What care I for the number of your sacrifices, says the Lord? I have had enough of whole burnt rams and fat of fatlings. In the blood of calves, lambs, and goats I find no pleasure. When you come in to visit me, who asks these things of you? Trample my courts no more. Bring no more worthless offerings. Your incense is loathsome to me. New moon and Sabbath, calling of assemblies, octaves with wickedness, these I cannot bear. Your new moons and festivals I detest, they weigh me down, I tire of the load. When you spread out your hands, I close my eyes to you. Though you pray the more, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves clean. Put away your misdeeds from before my eyes. Cease doing evil. Learn to do good. Make justice your aim. Redress the wrong. Hear the orphan's plea. Defend the widow. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The response is, To the upright I will show the saving power of God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, for your burnt offerings are before me always. I take from your house no bullock, no goats out of your fold. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. Why do you recite my statutes and profess my covenant with your mouth, though you hate discipline and cast my words behind you? To the upright I will show the saving power of God. When you do these things, shall I be deaf to it? Or do you think you that I am like yourself? I will correct you by drawing them up before your eyes. He that offers praise as a sacrifice glorifies me, and to him that goes the right way I will show the salvation of God. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, Do not think that I have come to bring peace upon the earth. I have come to bring not peace, but the sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's enemies will be those of his household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, And whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is righteous will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink because he is a disciple. Amen. I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. When Jesus finished giving these commands to his twelve disciples, he went away from that place to teach and to preach in their towns. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Reflection on Today's Readings by Bob The ways of God may not be what we expect, in fact we often are mistaken in our understanding of God's will. Isaiah speaks to the people of his time, telling them that God does not want ritualistic sacrifices and killing of animals. God wants the people to sacrifice their lifestyles in order to care and serve others, especially the outcasts and disenfranchised. The psalm builds on this and proclaims that God will show the divine saving power to those who live upright lives. Jesus completes his dismissal speech to his disciples who are just about to go out on their apostolic mission. He warns them that the disciple slash apostle will meet opposition, even from within one's family. Following the example of Jesus will demand taking up one's cross just as Jesus takes up his cross. In the beginning of Isaiah's book, the prophet speaks harsh words to people. He tells them that they might be performing ritualistic ceremonies and putting on an appearance of being faithful believers but their actions in their daily lives do not reflect their faith relationship with God. They seek to do whatever they can, after their participation in Holy Day activities, of course, in order to get ahead, usually at the expense of the poor and lowly. Isaiah proclaims God's message that what God really desires is not Holocaust offerings or rituals, but the caring for those who are the Anavim, the outcasts, orphans, widows, and other poor. The psalm reverberates this same theme of God's desire that the people be faithful to the spirit of God's word. God is aware of the continual religious ceremonies that the people perform in the name of God. Yet, those are not what God wants. God wants the people to be faithful to the teachings which God has revealed to them, loving their neighbors, after all the majority of the Ten Commandments deal with how to relate to other people, and only a few speak about worship of God. Jesus probably shocked his followers when he tells them in today's Gospel, Do not think that I have come to bring peace upon the earth. They had come to know Jesus as the meek and gentle Master Teacher. They had seen mostly positive reactions to his teaching and ministry. He now tells them that they will experience division, hatred, even persecution, and it may come from members of their own family. He also speaks about taking up crosses. It would be hard for them to understand what this meant since Jesus had only alluded to his suffering and death. To them the cross would have been the worst possible death, reserved for the Romans' capital punishment of serious criminals. The readings may not be what we want to hear either. We follow the example of some of the religious people in Isaiah's day. We think we are decent followers of the Lord Jesus if we make it to church almost every weekend and we contribute to the plate collection. What more could be asked of us? We probably donate to different charities and treat the people we know well and in a kind manner. God's word as spoken through Isaiah is, that's not enough. You need to cease doing evil, learn to do good. Make justice your aim, redress the wronged, hear the orphan's plea, defend the widow. The challenge God puts before us is, what are we going to do to change the unjust and unfair practices in the world today? What attitude do we have toward people whom we judge with racial profiling, whether they look to be Hispanic, Middle Eastern, Asian, European, or African? Do we get involved in community activities to better the society in which we live? Are we willing to help the poor who reach out and seek our attention? Do we search out those who are quiet and do not present their concerns but are in dire need of help? Do we do what is most beneficial not only for our own health, but the health of others? 
That's what the Word of God in Isaiah is challenging us to do. Jesus also presents a challenge to his disciples, including us. Sharing the gospel may lead to our being ostracized by people, even members of our own families. We may have to make a choice about what is our number one priority in life, following the ways of the Lord Jesus or hiding behind family ties. If we truly are willing to lose our life and ties with others for the sake of the Lord Jesus, we will be given a greater ability to live not only in heaven, but also now. When we place our relationship with the Lord Jesus first, everything else will fit into place, even though it may cause us pain and suffering. With our focus on Jesus, we will care and minister to others because they are loved by God and are part of the family of God, not just our blood relatives or close friends. We will treat them as the Lord Jesus treats them, which is a more loving way than we would treat them if we only dealt with them on a merely human level. Living life as a disciple of Jesus may not always be easy. Human life for Jesus was not always easy. He had to say challenging words even to those whom he loved and to whose whom he called to share in his ministry. He had to suffer at the hands of those who did not understand him. He chose to do his Abba Father's will even if that meant death, death on the cross. Can we expect an easier life than Jesus? Yet, if we are willing to live uprightly, the psalm today promises that the Lord, will show the saving power of God to us. The personal question or action for today, what is my attitude in regard to doing God's will? Am I satisfied if I attend church regularly? Do I see my religious commitments extending beyond churchy things? What is my reaction when I read about or see injustice? Do I put my relationship with the Lord Jesus above my relationships with family and friends? Does my having a relationship with Jesus enable me to be a more loving member of a family? How can I more fully live out my call to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus? Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God, ever loving and caring. Through your goodness, you call people to be in relationship with you and then you challenge those who would be in relationship with you. You seek a deeper relationship with us than merely ritualistic activities. You want us to show our love for you by loving and caring for those whom you have placed along our journey of faith. Our service of others is the sacrifice you ask of us. Your Son gave us the example we are to follow through His ministry. He was willing to reach out to others, challenging some to look at their wayward lives, comforting others who were on the outskirts of society. Jesus was willing to give Himself fully to doing your will, even to the point of death, death on the cross. We give you thanks for the role modeling that Jesus gave to us. We ask that we may be strengthened by the further outpouring of your Holy Spirit, so we can joyfully face the challenges that lie before us. As always we make this prayer in the name of the Master Teacher, Jesus, your Son and our Brother, who is living and reigning with you and the Holy Spirit, our one and only God, forever and ever. Amen. Presented by Father Frankie Fernandez OFM Capuchin Justice Peace Integrity Creation JPIC Capuchin Goa